So now in this video we're going to take a look at a uh, basic backup power source right here. So we have the uh, main power coming there and we are recharging this super capacitor and we are also powering the load. So let's uh, get that back into the circuit right there. We're just bridging the gap. This is a uh, this is also a 5.5 volt 4 farad uh, little super capacitor right there negative side. It's uh, polarized, you got to charge in the right direction, positive over there. So same thing with this one. And now if we uh, briefly lose power or something, you can see that the uh, super capacitor will jump in and power a light load in uh, this case. This super capacitor also has internal resistance, so we can uh, just short it to the power. It's going to limit how much current goes into it to a safe amount. And then uh, when it's charged, it's probably about 10 ohms of resistance when we looked at the uh, last video with this one, but it looks like it may have gone up overnight while I kept it uh, charged. Um, but uh, that's why I swapped them out. But in uh, any case, uh, when we cut power, we lose power. This, uh, if we like short or something, we have a problem over there. This shot key diode will prevent current from going back to the power supply and uh, or any other connections along that path. It gives you just a path through the load back to the little super capacitor right there. So now I swapped out the 1K resistor with the 220 ohm resistor. We got about four times the amount of current flowing through there. Let's see how well this one does. And it uh, keeps lighting that one up uh, pretty good right there. We have the other one again. It was doing really good last night. I don't know what happened. I kept it charging all night long and uh, we will uh, plug that in and we'll come back in a little bit to make sure that it is topped off. And now zooming back, uh, that's the current of the LED right there. None of it is uh, charging the super capacitor as you can see there. But if we uh, cut uh, power, you can see the LED got really dim right there. So the capacitor is uh, powering the LED. And uh, so we should be having to top off the capacitor, but there you can see no more currents going in there. Something fishy with these. These are really old. Uh, super capacitors though and uh, so I don't remember any problems with them when they were newer we'll plug this one back in and again there you can see the capacitor is topping off it'll be completely charged when the current is just the needs of the LED but there you can see I removed the jumper and uh, the LED brightness didn't really change but you're gonna see we need a fair amount more current right there to uh, top off the super capacitor and now zooming into the diagram, which I actually did make before I realized that one supercapacitor was uh, kind of bad. So I kind of predicted that uh, I may have been a little too rough with it. So I shorted it while charging last night and uh, shorted it while discharging last night. And uh, that may have been too much. So I did add this note here. Uh, make sure you limit current for supercapacitors. This goes for batteries and stuff too. Um, and you also have to limit the voltage to a safe amount. In this case, it's a 5.5 volt supercapacitor. So we can have 5 volts right there. But a little bit uh, more series resistance uh, probably would have been okay. Um, just realize that uh, the supercapacitor, it looks like about 10 ohms of resistance internally will uh, add up when it comes to uh, powering the load. But, uh, you know, usually you got plenty of time to charge it. That's not a big issue but uh, you don't want to lose too much power powering uh, certain loads. This is just a demonstration circuit. We don't really care about how bright the LED is or anything. Uh, it just shows that the capacitor jumped in instantly and powered the load when we had problems with the supply, whatever. So that's the reason why we have the shot key diode as well. Maybe the uh, power supply short circuited or something, who knows? Um, uh, we don't care. We have the shot key diode there. Uh, capacitor charges when power is applied. When it's lost for whatever reason, uh, the supercapacitor will not go back to the power supply because of the shot key diode. So it's a rectifier diode basically, which means it lets current go one way but not the other, up to 45 volts for this particular one. This is a larger one though, so I have it in a holder. Um, so it prevents current going back there. We only have one path now when we cut power for the current to go through the uh, supercapacitor right there. The reason why uh, you want to use a shot key diode for something like this is because it lets uh, drops less voltage than a rectifier diode. This particular one's probably going to drop about 0.2 volts at low current, uh, 0.3 volts at high current. But in case, out of that 5 volts, we should be able to charge the capacitor up to at least 4.7 volts. 
and that will be the voltage across the load right there. We, when we first applied power, uh, just a short circuit charge completely discharged uh, the capacitor, which may have been why we damaged it last night. Um, that might be the problem why it's got uh, more internal resistance now. It doesn't really look like it's letting current flow through. Maybe I fried something internally. But in uh, any case, um, uh, it had about 0.5 amps that it needed right when we applied uh, power. And uh, so that's something to take into consideration. The load is going to see a lot less voltage across it when the capacitor is charging if the power supply can't provide enough current. So now I don't want to drag it on about uh, the problem with that uh, capacitor, but I figured since I'm going to jump back to the breadboard, I would do a quick demonstration. You saw how dim that LED got. Um, the capacitor doesn't seem to be really letting a ton of current uh, go through. Uh, there you can see the LED. It looks like it stayed pretty much the same brightness. But we're going to focus more on the uh, shot key diode right there. And so it's letting, uh, you know, current go through. That way there's the gray band right there. The It's in this little uh, terminal block though because these wires are way too large to put in the breadboard. This can actually handle 15 amps of current uh, maximum right there. That's why it has the uh, larger leads and it's uh, physically larger. Um, but we can take this terminal block, just bend the wires into there, and then bend it up because of its large size, and then we can put it on the breadboard. If I need to have it uh, point the other direction, I just uh, turn it uh, that way, and then I'd have to do my wiring for other stuff over here. Um, so I just wanted to show that. Again, this can handle about 15 amps of current. The breadboard cannot. Um, so you gotta live within the current limits of the breadboard. Probably don't wanna do more than one amp of uh, current. Um, but in uh, any case, uh, we can still put this in the terminal block, just stay within the current limits of the uh, breadboard, not of this particular component. You can always go lower than what uh, the component can handle, but not higher than what other stuff can handle.